What is going on everyone? Welcome to 24-7 Football for this week's Talking Points. Um, it's been an incredible week of sport and we've got the World Eleven that happened last night as well. We've got Ben on with us. Um, he's back. It's a weekly appearance. I know all of you absolutely love it when Ben's on the show. Um, ben, welcome back. Shh, natural, isn't it, mate? Best presenter, best voice, best look. And I bet this gets the most views out of, all, out of them all. <laughs> it's no coincidence. It's no coincidence that the best looking one here gets the most views. So let, let's keep going, George. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let's just keep going. So um, we'll get straight into it. This week's first talking point was Manchester United. Um, a 2-0 loss away at West Ham over the weekend. And it's really not going well for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Man United at the moment. I think um, since he was appointed, I think the 13th out of 23 teams in the Premier League for form. Um, and it's just not going well, is it? No, it's been absolutely horrendous. And I, I actually watched that game against West Ham as well, and they were just so bad. I mean, to be fair, in Solskjaer's defence, they've got a lot of injuries to key players. You could like to Shaw, Pogba, Rashford going off injured, Martial. So that's three, three, maybe four of your best players there not playing. But ultimately, Manchester United versus West Ham, five, well, not even five years ago now, probably about eight or nine years ago, that'd be an easy Manchester United away win, but that's just not the case anymore, and uh, yeah, he's got a lot to think about, lots to change, and uh, we'll wait and see if he gets given the time to change it. Yeah, we made the case last week, um, because Harry was here, he's a Man United fan, we made the case last week that, you know, as much as Man United fans were happy they got the result against Leicester, mm. that's a team that they should be looking to be yeah. miles above. Miles above, but and yeah. I but if you look, if you look at it in terms of playing squad, I don't think they're that far apart from each exactly, other. To be honest, exactly. Eight hundred million spent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, that's what I mean. Then you look at the team. You know, I don't understand where that money's gone. Jesse Lingard's now having to go up front. Yeah, and I know, I know injuries. Um, you know, as a Man City, I know injuries. You know, mm. it's, it's you can't plan for them. But the squad depth was never there, was it? No, and. You sort of felt like this was going to happen when they got rid of Lukaku as well. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of people that say, you know, it's it's not an easy fix. Man United is a slow process, but they've said that with every manager that has come yeah. in. And it's been, what, six, seven years now since Ferguson's left. Mm. When does the process actually start to take effect? Yeah. Um, and I think you've got to look at the top, haven't you? I think, yeah, obviously. I think they're to blame for the majority of it. I think. They need to give Solskjaer more time, in my opinion. I think he's got it's a poison chalice that job at the minute because you can't do, you can't. I don't think you can get into the top four with the team they've got unless you have a master shot. Like, well, to be fair, you look at it now with Mourinho, the fact that he got them to finish second in the league when he was there seems now like an absolute that that master. Was his greatest yeah, literally, because if you look at the team now and you think top two, nowhere near it. So yeah. that was a stroke of genius, really, if you think about it, like in retrospect. But. Um, yeah, I think that obviously they've got to take a lot of the blame at the top, but ultimately they spent eight hundred million and they've got nothing to show for it. So it's like the manager's fault who's picking the players. It depends on the recruitment system. No one really knows who's signing the players. So yeah. uh, if it's the managers that sign the players, they have to take some responsibility. But ultimately, which the majority of Man United fans think is that mm. the board are actually like recruiting and targeting players. So if that's the case, they've got a massive part to blame in everything. All that money spent. You look at their full strength XI. Which players would you say are truly at a decent level? Pogba, even though he's not really shown it in Man United. De Ge I'd say De Gea, Harry Maguire, Pogba, Martial. I wouldn't say Martial. Yeah, well, I, I, the, on, the only reasons I it's think a, I it's think a Martial, tough one. Yeah, just I think Martial is a good player. I just don't think he's. Proved it, yeah. No, I don't think no. he's had anywhere near the output that, say, you need. You know, we spoke about it with Raheem Sterling years ago. Yeah, he didn't have the output, mm. and even then, Raheem Sterling was better than Martial. But in terms of output back then, I mean, you look at you look at United now. You t I'd agree with you, Pogba, De Gea, Maguire. No one else really. Yeah, yeah. Wan Bissaka's one for the future, but mm. even on the ball, I don't think he's great. No. No, this is obviously like we said, like you said, it's transitional phase, but it's been going on for a long, long time now. And but to be honest, I don't see it getting any closer. Like I feel like they'll still be in transition three years in, from now because they've got so many positions that are so weak in, um, and so many players that don't want to be there. I've seen so many Man United fans complaining, saying, "Oh, this is I can't watch this anymore." This is <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, no, they've, they've as, not as got an it. Fan, they've not got it. Like yeah, they've <laughs> not got it bad, but they haven't. 
with with the tradition and, the, and everything they've set in the past, it's just they're underachieving so bad. So I can understand the frustration, but I think three years from now, I think we'll still be having this discussion that there's so much that needs to be done. When twenty four seven football is massive. Correct. Well, no, it's not massive now. No, it's um, huge, mate. Three hundred, so, three hundred some subscribers, I believe now. Three hundred seventy three. So. Um, so uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, so next point was uh, a potential Manchester United target, James Madison. Um, scored a screamer mm. on the against Tottenham to win the game for Leicester. Um, horrific bag, by the way. It was an absolute horrific bag that. He oh, that Gucci before. one, yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, what a player and. He's got to get a start of the Euros next year for me. Yeah, he's, he's been absolutely fantastic so far. Uh, statistically, one of the most creative midfields in the Premier League. And playing in a team like Leicester, that's some, it takes some doing that as well. I think he's been absolutely pivotal to uh, like their ambitions for this season. I think he'll be absolutely fantastic for the rest of it. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't finish with, within the top five assists in the league yeah. with, a sort of, uh, with the sort of ability that he's got. Um, obviously, we saw his ability with the goal as well, adding a few goals to his so game as well. So, so, so good yeah, he's re- he's really promising. But I just don't, I just don't want them to rush him in because uh, we had this discussion about Deli Alley. If you remember that when everyone when he first came onto the scene, everyone was buzzing over him saying, "Oh, he's he's that number ten that we've needed for years." Yeah. And you look at his England performance; they've been so underwhelming. Um, I think, I think, to be honest, I think they're different players. Yeah, no, I, I think, but I think they, they bring the ultimately they're there to do the same thing. They're there to create goals and score goals. Which when Dele Alli first came in, he was one of the best in the league at doing yeah, that. Yeah. So I think they need to bring him in slowly and utilize him in the right way. But I feel like with Southgate at the helm, I think he'll, he'll, his creativity will come out a lot more than Ali's did under the likes of Hodgson. Do you think he gets a move next summer? He definitely warrants one. I mean. If I was him, I wouldn't move. Um, I think under Rodgers, I think he's going to play his best football. I think it suits him down to the ground. Um, you look at the likes of the players that Rodgers have, has developed. You look at the likes of Suarez, Raheem Sterling when he was at Liverpool. I think them young players really benefit his coaching methods and the way he lets them just express themselves on the pitch. Um, so I think he'd be silly to move at this point in his career, but that doesn't mean that the clubs aren't going to come in for him. And I think yeah. the likes of Manchester United... <coughs> sorry. Manchester United needs to definitely be taking a look at him. Um, yeah, he, he's he's fantastic. He's it's nice to see that he's an English talent. As yeah, well, like we just yeah, say. definitely. It's, it's crazy. Um, just just on touch on Leicester a little bit. They've been fantastic this yeah. season. And where can they finish? I I, th- I definitely think top six. Definitely the way they've been playing. Uh, they've got a good they've got a good squad depth as well now. As well. Um, they've got some good players in every single position. Um, they sort of, they've replaced McGuire almost immediately with the uh, his name escapes now. He's got a really strange yeah, name, he's isn't Turkish? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Lord Farquhar. Let's call him that for now. But um, yeah, he, he's like been Sayunku, yeah, right? yeah, something like that. But he's been brilliant uh, since McGuire's departure. So they look like they've solved that straight away. Um, and obviously going forward, they've been brilliant. Look like Harvey Barnes, Damari Gray, Madison, Vardy. They've got so much going forward, and I think yeah, they'll definitely be. Definitely be a contender for top six this season, I think. Yeah, it's it's, it's refreshing to see, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and let's see what happens towards the end of the season. I'm not looking forward to playing them anyway. No. Um, so, moving on. Third is the um, VAR. Now, VAR just keeps coming up on talking points. It's always a talking point, yeah, isn't it? It, it, it will be all season. It keeps coming up. A um, few, few little decisions that we need to speak about. First of all, being uh, the Tottenham Hotspur goal. Mm. Serge Aurier gets... Uh, Gets Spurs a second to put them 2 0 up, probably win the game from there. Yeah. Um Hung Min Son is a judge to have been I think it was one point four centimetres offside. Yeah. Um I mean in terms of what VAR has shown us, the camera angle that we've been shown, he's offside. Mm. It's done its job. I don't like people saying it's not clear and obvious. V- offside isn't clear it just yeah. is what it is. Yeah. It's it's not objective. No. Nope. VA, um, offside is offside. The only problem is that you, if you if you're going to be that crystal clear, you don't know the exact moment that the ball leaves his foot. Yeah, and that's that's obviously where where the problem is. But a lot of people saying that it's not clear and obvious. Offside's offside. Yeah, I think it did its job. To be honest, uh, I know that from a football purist point of view, you don't want to see stuff like that because you want that passion in the game. You want that sort of excitement and when something comes in and, ma- and it's that marginal do you think you start to think oh is it being sort of overused is it too is it too precise is it too 
is it too detailed? But ultimately, every manager in the Premier League voted for VAR's introduction. They knew that this was going to be this scenario would rear its head, and it will again at some point this season. I've no doubt about it. So they knew what they were voting for. They, it, it, they voted for its introduction, um, and I think that it's done its job ultimately. So yeah, fair play to VAR because we've been very critical of it recently, yeah. um, and it's done its job on a couple of occasions now. So yeah, it seems like maybe finally. Um, we might be utilising it in the right way, but we'll wait and see. I'm sure something's going to spark up uh, again I, soon. I mean, offside's always going to be the case, isn't it? Offside, it's it's just one. It's definitive. It just is mm. what it is. And in in the law of the game, it did its job. Yeah. And then a lot of people are saying, you know, the attacker should have advantage. Well, that's not what VAR no. is here for. That's that is uh, everyone wanted VAR. To be fair, uh, Gary Neville summed it up perfectly for me. Pundits, commentators, players, and coaches have cried for one thing uh, for years from officials, consistency. We now have it on offside and there are suggestions that we should make it subjective in millimetre cases and he's, he's right for me. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think the, 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 they're like, oh, giving the attack the advantage, that's been a myth for years. That's never that's never been a rule. It's never been introduced at any point. Um, so the fact that people are saying that, I feel like that sparks a bit of desperation that they're just looking for something that's going to bring them that back that purist but this is just it's the modern age technology it's, too. Not, it's not going to happen as well you can't now go to it being subjective yeah, after there's been exactly. crucial goals that have been given exactly. on that basis it'll never, it'll, it won't get changed from here on in it will not get changed no. at all there was no another point. one which was um, the Aston Villa penalty claim and now this risk. one this one's but now the, the thing that annoys me is that VAR was brought in to correct clear and obvious errors mm. There's been quite a few this season and VAR is not allowed to interfere because the referee has seen it. But the, if the referee is wrong, why can it not get involved? The one I'm talking about, obviously, was um, the Arsenal. Was it Socrates? Who yeah, Socrates, Who led with yeah. his arm. It's clearly at his arm. It was probably going in, or at least on target. And, you know, he's led with his arm. It's a penalty. Yeah, but because it, I'm, I'm assuming it's because the referee didn't point to the spot that VAR can't then confirm his decision or overturn it. Um, it should be able to just I'm not it, sure. I'm not. Yeah. Ultimately, it should be a case of the ball goes out of play. We we stop, and then the, someone at the back at wherever they are tells him, "Yeah, penalty. Definitely hit his arm." Blah blah blah. And then Villa ultimately, well, potentially get an equaliser in that just game. A, just the same as um, goal line technology. He gets yeah. a thing on his wrist. It's a goal, so he gives it. It's a penalty. Yeah. Yeah. And Aston Villa have been done again. Yeah, yeah, that's two decisions in a three weeks. That's two weeks, points so. they've lost now yeah. on VAR, mm. not being used in the correct way. Um, so let us know what you think of VAR down below. Next up, we've got um, the World Eleven um, UEFA Awards this week. Um, what, what, what more can I say? People like Sergio Ramos, Marcelo, uh, Modric. To be fair, you can make a case. Well, not, not really, no, yeah. because Real Madrid are awful. They had statistically. We'll go with the two the two defenders first. Statistically, Real Madrid had the eighth worst defense in La Liga, mm. not even in Europe. And Sergio Ramos they didn't win anything, and they get into the team. And you think Andy Robertson didn't get him. Emmerich Laporte, Man City won four trophies last season, and not a single player in that world eleven. Yeah, that was a bit of a jolt to be honest. I was very surprised with Ramos in particular. Yeah, I mean Laporte's been incredible, and, he, and even then, you've got. I'm not even just crying out for Man City. He just shouldn't be there. No. He should not be there. Um, and why, why is he there? Why is Marcelo there over Andrew, Andy Robertson? I think it's just cause, I think it's just a go-to, to be honest. Um, I feel like he, it's he been like 18, for a while. He 18 La Liga games, yeah. Marcelo, this last season. Exactly, yeah. Marcelo, I think, has been so... He just disappeared, hasn't he? You don't really see anything of him anymore. And the fact that he's going to that world of having really it baffled me as well. I think Andy Robertson, hundred percent, should have been there. Hundred percent. I couldn't think of anyone better, to be honest. Sergio Ramos, again, a bit of a go-to for them sort of um, awards yeah. evenings. He always seems to be in there for something. Um, and then you're looking, obviously, Van Dijk going there. But then you think, who can replace him? Laporte, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd have Laporte over Ramos, or even, or even. Trent Alexander-Arnold because there wasn't a right back in there. It was three centre halves. Mm. Yeah, well, the yeah. Late Van Dijk, Ramos. Well, so why is Trent not in there? Yeah, incredible season he's had. Mm. But I, I just don't know what we've got to do. You know, Bernardo Silva won five trophies last season, and he was sixth overall in midfielders. Modric is ahead of him. Modric won the World Player of the Year the year before, but based on 2019, what has he done? Yeah. No, I, compl- no, I completely agree. 
Um, I think I, th I just don't understand what who the people in charge of the voting system can't ultimately look at that and think he's underperformed so badly. It'd be a bit of a travesty if one of these players doesn't get in. Yeah. And yes. and it, it, to be fair, players like Bernal Silva they just they deserve that recognition. It's yeah. not like. It's not like from a Manchester City point of view. Like it's not just you that thinks it. it's me. It's my, me personally as well. Like I've got no affiliation with Man City, but I feel like at least one of them players deserves some sort of recognition yeah. for the season they had. Eden so, Hazard gets him. To be yeah. fair, he had an okay season with Chelsea. Again, yeah. didn't do much. Sadio Mane don't get him. Yeah. Like no, it, come on. it's it is a bit ridiculous. But Neymar I think, was I think, fourth. I think, Neymar yeah. was Man I think that these these awards yeah. these awards are getting a bit. Bit of a joke to be honest. Now you see, it seems like every year there's always players in there that you're just thinking they've just put them in there because they can't think of anyone else or yeah. someone's been cut out that shouldn't have been cut out. But and, and I, I will say as well, Angolo Kante is a fantastic footballer, but he should not have been anywhere near mm. for 2019 anyway. But again, it's a goal to in it because he's it's been not, in that. Because he's been in the. I know it's been in the team the year so long that they think well. He's got. He's obviously got ability that puts him in there. So we'll just put him in there because he's one of the best players there. Yeah. But you look at. But like you said, you look at performances. He's been slightly underwhelming. But to be fair, he's been in a bad team. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What a goal on the weekend as yeah. well. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, leads us perfectly on to our next point. Our final point: Lionel Messi, Player of the Year. What? A, what a player! Finally, he's got the recognition he deserves. I'm sick of seeing Van Dyke pick up every single award that's on offer. Lionel Messi should pick up the Player of the Year, World Player of the Year, every single year. I think. I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. 51 games last season, 52 goals, and 30 assists. But because Van Dyke won a few headers, he gets Player of the Year. <laughs> no, Messi, the best player. 100 ever. 100 percent. The game. 100 percent. Wow. There's no debate. There's no debate around it. Anyone who comes at you with Cristiano Ronaldo, just unfriend them on every single platform you know. You know, um, I mean, everyone knows my feelings. You can go back to that video that we did if you want, but this no, no comparison. No, there's no comparison. And Van Dyke, as good as he's been for Liverpool, what an impact he's had on the team. Leader in the dressing room, I'm sure. Lionel Messi, look at his statistics, statistics every single year, and no one gets anywhere near him. Cristiano Ronaldo is unlucky. That he was in the same era as Messi. Exactly, but ultimately is, and ultimately, Lionel Messi, best player of all time. So, well done, FIFA, finally giving the recognition he deserves. The fact that Luka Modric won it last year was absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, well done, well done. He's finally got the recognition he deserves. Yeah, well done, Messi. Um, I'm sure he watches anyway. One thing that He's one of the 373 subscribers. Well, you know, yeah, I, I, Lionel Messi loves this channel, um, and if Lionel Messi wants my hoodie, he can have my hoodie. <laughs> um, but, yeah, valid subscriber, um, and he's just fan he's such a joy to watch, yeah. such a joy to watch. No one can do what Messi does, and it's just, it's a nice note to end on for me. Because Absolutely. Well done to Lionel Messi. What a boy, what a um, boy. So that pretty much concludes this week's uh, Talking Points. I hope you've enjoyed this um, show. We'll be back next week with Ben again. So um, give us your suggestions. You can tag us on social media, put a comment in the link below. Um, it's not a problem. But subscribe to the channel. It means a massive amount. Um, like the video as well. Check out Ben on Twitter. I'll put his thing in the description oh, uh, below. Um, and thank you everyone for watching today. And we shall see you next week.